Yes. Uh, hello and welcome fellow weirdos. <laughs> My name is Maria Bamford. I am a comedian as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I've never heard of you. That's fair. <laughs> I know. Whether you think I'm a comedian or not, I hope you can do as my therapist has often suggested to me, have curiosity about the feelings in your body. <laughs> Notice what the air feels like coming through your nostrils. Cool through your nose and oh, warm through the mouth. Let's explore what is comedy. <laughs> what is funny? Is this going well? I don't know. What I do know is that my body feels like it's filled with bees. <laughs> but my thumb is okay. <laughs> BT dubs, by the way, the IOCDF uh, had a pre-meeting Zoom with me before the speech to tell me they were anxious about parts of my story. <laughs> Hold for laughs. A group of therapists who regularly tell people it's okay to have an obsession with licking a urinal <laughs> were very concerned about me bringing up another tab ta taboo topic in the OCD community, uh, faith-based care. How wonderful to know that even the IOCDF has what I hope to be irrational fears. <laughs> I love religion. I have seen seven of the ten Fast and Furious films, <laughs> two of those in the theater. I am all about family and faith. My husband and I give 11% of our income to charity. That's a full 1% more than a biblical tithe. If we're gonna, if we're gonna get, get into who's going to heaven. But if you are triggered by anyone describing their slightly negative experience they had while in faith-based counseling, feel free to plug your ears, grit your teeth, and begin praying without ceasing. Let's, let's pleasure predict uh, how this speech is gonna go. Uh, pleasure predicting is, of course, when you rate how you think an experience is going to feel from 1 to 10, and then after the experience, rate what it actually felt like from 1 to 10. I'm going to say this speech will be a 3. I will let you know if that number changes when we're at the bar <laughs> later tonight. When will Maria actually begin this speech? Well, I'm in avoidance right now. Uh, this speech is a very uh, strong exposure response prevention exercise in my phobia of bombing. So that if this doesn't go over well, I will have succeeded in facing my very worst fear, which is uh, to be rejected completely by the people that I love and admire and that means you, therapist. All right. What are the ACT reasons for me doing this speech? My values that drive me to do this tonight is number one, I love money. <laughs> number two, I would like the check to clear. Okay, now I'm doing the speech. Uh, there are many great resources for mental health uh, that are free, <laughs> not this one. Uh, but in that spirit, I will tell you about some, t some of the th free help that I've, got, I've gotten along the way of finding recovery from my OCD intrusive thoughts. Uh, oh, Maria, what intrusive thoughts do you have? Well, the one I'm willing to tell you about is pedophilia OCD, so heads up, they get worse. <laughs> Before getting professional paid, whoa, paid help for my OCD, 
I got the not very good, but available free help that is found in 12-step cults. Yes, they are problematic, Judeo-Christian pseudo-spiritual language combined with peer counseling, which is notoriously a terrible idea. Here's what I love about 12-step cults. Number one, free. Number two, free. Number three, they cannot kick me out. Even if I go to one of those meetings with a full bottle of Jack Daniels and I'm eating an ice cream cake with a stolen porn DVD. <laughs> all anybody will ever say to me is, keep coming back. <laughs> because they are very dumb angels. I brought my husband to one of the meetings and he said, these he, these people need professional help. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. And yet none is forthcoming. And so here we are in this Zoom breakout room. <laughs> I hope to create the vibe of my favorite 12-step meetings, a place where you can talk about extremely shameful things and get laughs, or even more healing than laughs, which is light disinterest from your peers and the boredom from those who have heard it all before. In 12-step style, I will share with you what's happened with me, my OCD, in order of what it was like, what happened, and what it's like now. Let's go back to 1979. Uh, I was nine. Most of you were not born yet. Uh, if you are in any major religion, uh, sometime between the ages of 8 and 14, they ask you to publicly double down, uh, to say, I'm all in on this extremely complicated set of ideas. I cannot read a bus schedule, <laughs> but sign me up for the duration. I love church. It was my first time seeing stand-up. Got to see a white guy have a hot take on a weird story. <laughs> the only problem is I had to memorize a speech uh, at around the age of nine, uh, part of which was, uh, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So spooky. I, I said to my mother at the time, Mom, I do not believe in any of this stuff. Uh, I don't believe in God. I stopped being able to sleep at night two years back. Uh, I haven't slept in two years. Uh, when I was seven, um, yeah, why can't I sleep at night? Thank you for asking. Uh, my sister gave me titty twisters. It was the 70s. It was not personal. Uh, I somehow got it in my head. I thought, what if, despite the fact that this was done to me, what if I were now, because I had my teeth twisted, now I was a teeth twister, I was a breast breaker, I was a monstrous hoot honker, and I gotta stay up all night and sit on my hands to prevent myself from doing such a horrible thing. Uh, and I'm gonna get in the weeds here, Mom, but what if furthermore, furthermore, I were to be out of control and chop you guys up a chunk, into chunks and bits, have sex with those chunks and bits, put those chunks and bits on a cob salad, toss it, and feed it to the baby Jesus. I'm just spitballing. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll deal with it when I'm 35. <laughs> Mom, wouldn't it be weird if I lied, if I lied to everyone, if I broke one of the only rules we have in our group and I said I believed in something I did not at all believe in, and then we all went out for roof beef sandwiches at Arby's. Honey, would you please just do it? The bishop only comes once a year. And that's when I learned, you guys, it is okay to fudge the truth as long as it's a crowd pleaser. <laughs> and a crowd pleaser is, of course, what my husband calls my bowel movements. 
as long as, only if they are scentless, footlong, fecal ropes. He does not applaud for just anything. It's got to be good shit. <laughs> Come on, San Francisco Marriott, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is salad country. I did genuinely try to tell my mom what was going on in my head. I think I said something along the lines of, uh, Mom, I'm just worried I'm going to hurt every, everybody. And the most healing part of my mother's response was her almost complete lack of concern at my terrifying thoughts of harming others. My mother said, oh, God. Honey, it is okay if you're gay. <laughs> you key. That wasn't what I was concerned about, but wow, now that you mention it. <laughs> and that was the first, uh, my first taste of the healing power of apathy. If you present a loved one or a healthcare provider with your worst symptoms and their face glazes over in weariness, know that you have received some of the best healthcare we have in this country. <laughs> and that is the yawn of a professional too exhausted to panic at what you think is a crisis. <laughs> My mom uh, set me up with a therapist and sadly, because it was the 70s, my mom set me up with a therapist who was completely freaked out by my thoughts. Uh, this therapist was a Christian. She was a former nun. Uh, she was and is a delight and uh, did the best she could. And this Christian therapist <laughs> was so concerned about my thoughts that she sent me home with an allegorical Christian novel called Heinz Feet in High Places, I do not recommend it. It is today, uh, to this day, one of the creepiest books I've ever read, and I was raised by a father who thought the myth of Sisyphus was inspiring. <laughs> Sisyphus, right? <clears throat> I mean, the, the rock rolls down, back down on him. <laughs> it's like, it's either that or suicide. It's my birthday, Dad. Um, if you already have some mental, sometimes a faith-based therapist, no matter how well-meaning, someone who is deeply familiar with not only the New Testament, but the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, might give you some guidance from the left field of the Book of Revelations. Here's the opening line of this book, Heinz Feet in High Places, that she gave to me. This is the story of how much afraid escaped from her fearing relatives and went with the shepherd to the high places where perfect love casteth out fear. Okay. Uh, as a nine-year-old, I'm gonna assume this ex-nun LCSW sees me as this gal, much afraid. This lady in the book, much afraid, is a hardworking, physically handicapped, unattractive young lady with, quote, crippling disfigurements living in the valley of humiliation. Also, she is abused by her adoptive family, the Fearings, along with her aunt, dismal forebodings, and her step-siblings, gloomy and spiteful. Also, uh, she is forced to marry and presumably have sexual relationships with a co cousin named Craven Fear. Now this is all well and good. Uh, if you're feeling pretty solid in reality and able to interpret an, uh, symbolism, but when you're afraid you're gonna kill your family and you can't sleep at night, it's a little confusing. Um, I was in the fifth grade. Uh, this book was more of a junior high reading level. If not postdoc, I can barely skim it now. 
Uh, instead, it created new and more religiously sexual obsessions to add to my OCD mixtape. The only thing I did learn from this therapist was to fall asleep during the sessions, which began a lifetime practice of nihilistic napping. Just tap out. Uh, <laughs> Um, I stopped seeing the Christian therapist around 11, and I started what would become a very therapeutic 10-year-long uh, bulimic eating disorder. If you ever want to take your mind off almost everything, go on a diet. Uh, from 10 to 19, I masked my OCD uh, obsessions with more acceptable thoughts like, I'm fat. Maria, isn't this speech supposed to be 45 minutes? I hope she goes short. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm just trying to read your mind. All right. Um, here's what was helpful to me as a kid. Number one, my parents accepted me to the best of their ability, tried to get me help and get me involved in the community. I got music lessons, we participated in our neighborhood, and they did not freak out that I was super freaked out. Uh, my bulimia wasn't so severe that I got that long rabbit fur that you can get on your face, and I looked fine, which I guess at Kaiser Permanente is a diagnosis. Um, <laughs> at around 15, my dad enrolled me in Dale Carney training course of how to win friends and influence people. And there I learned a life-changing uh, format for talking to people. Uh, don't criticize, condemn, and con complain, compliment. Uh, the sweetest sound of a person's ear is the sound of their own name. Uh, and it was there that I fell in love with the extremely controlled environment of public speaking, where you can connect with people, but not at all. Uh, <laughs> For anyone who is afraid of public speaking, there is nothing safer. Please do stand-up comedy. You are amplified, lit, monologuing, timed. My second favorite place is in a corner with a book. I wouldn't touch me. She's fun. So let's fast forward. Uh, let's just say ages 15 to 30 were lonely and intense. By age 30, I was in two 12-step groups, Overeaters Anonymous, which is free. Uh, I began there after uh, calling a suicide hotline at the age of 19. Uh, in OA, I got to tell people stories about my episodes of binging. For example, I ate my sister's entire birthday cake and then jumped it all off on a mini trampoline to the scent of almost palpable ice cream farts. My next 12-step program was Debtors Anonymous, which makes sense, it was free, uh, <laughs> where I learned how to have and how to sometimes keep a job. Again, I cannot recommend enough going to a place where you'll find people who almost fall asleep when you reveal frightful stories of disgusting behavior or chortle and snort in response to something you thought you'd never tell anyone like how I plucked all the hair, hairs out of my armpits by hand. <laughs> Nobody? Oh, go to hell. <laughs> go to hell. Um, I've told circles of strangers in basements stuff like, the thing is, I don't want to work. Ha ha ha! I've told people, it's food that people leave behind. I eat it because I know it's good. They just ate it. <laughs> ah. All you will get at 12-step meetings are warm laughs of recognition, and if it's a late-night meeting, snores. Wake me up when your esophagus blows from vomiting up pickles. OA is a pretty tough crowd. Watch yourself. Um, with Debtors Anonymous free help of learning to keep a job, I finally had enough money, money, uh, money, to pay to see a professional therapist who wasn't in training at the GLBTQ Center, whose primary uh, response to all my problems, uh, she was getting her, her uh, master's, was, what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> 
I hired a pricey professional at 75 bucks a pop who was geographically close, my favorite aspect of any person, place, or thing. I don't know why I had gotten the courage to tell someone else about my creepy, unwanted thoughts, but I wasn't yet on bipolar meds, so I may have been in a hypomanic episode of hope. This woman, a psychologist, in Glendale, California, dressed all in pink, in a very pink room with lots of pink pillows, seemed friendly and pink. <laughs> I don't know why I told her in detail about my unwanted thoughts, uh, but there followed, after I told her, several uncomfortable moments punctuated by her questions. Well, have you, have you heard anyone? Do you have... Do you have plan plans to hurt anyone? What? No, 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 no. That's the whole thing. I don't, I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything so that I, I won't. I don't. I don't. I keep my hands like this, so they're all like. It's just. It's the fear of doing. So, but have you molested someone? No, no, no. I, I, no. I, I don't go. In, no. Again and again, she asked me more specifically whether I'd done these horrible things I was afraid of doing. Was I planning to seduce chihuahuas or <laughs> genocide loved ones? Um, it got to a point where I almost got offended. Like, of course not. <laughs> And I'm not sure why, maybe it was my million miles an hour backpedaling, but she did not believe me. Uh, we reached an impasse. She explained, hey, I'm a band-aided reporter and I need to let the police know what we've spoken about today. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. And it's been 45 minutes, so we should probably wrap up. So, do, do you take checks? I paid her $75 to call the police. She cashed it, and the cops never showed because I live in Los Angeles. The <laughs> The next time I got the courage to tell anyone about my thoughts, I was 35. At this point, during due to working and keeping only some jobs, not all jobs, just some, I had even more money. And I cannot tell you how much money can act as a physician, as it is the only way you will see a physician. Have you ever tried to check into a psych ward that doesn't take your insurance and they ask for three grand up front? I have. Uh, nurse, isn't spending enormous amounts of money on something you will later realize is worthless a classic indicator of mania? <laughs> and cash only, wow, is this like a city tow lot? Anyway, I did have a chunk of change from jobs that I wasn't fired from, and I was doing well, but only with work. I was having terrible problems with what I didn't know was OCD. My OCD symptoms included, number one, I didn't spend any time alone with anyone. Number two, I didn't make any eye contact with any other human being. Look at me, look at me now. Uh, I avoided all romantic relationships beyond one night stands and complete darkness at freeway entrance ramp motels. Red roof in, the door doesn't lock, everybody in. Um, number four, completely I avoided res, uh, relationships in general. Uh, with the cash cow of work, I was able to move into an apartment that allowed dogs. I got a dog named Blossom, who was my first medicinal balm. My new to me eight-year-old pug named Blossom could engage in hours long bouts of eye contact without seeming to notice what horrors raged in my brain. And sometimes she'd fall asleep in disinterest. Again, a powerful holistic cure. With wealth, I actually live somewhere so nice with such a lovely decrepit dog I thought to myself, and this was new, hey, I'm wearing a $300 pair of jeans. I deserve to get some help with these weird thoughts. 
How can I be so classy and troubled? I'm wearing a kitten heel. And as everyone does when they hit bottom, I Googled my symptoms and I came up with OCD. Turns out there was a CBT therapist five miles from my home at $300 a pop. Dr. Rodney Boone of Glendale, within three sessions, freed me from 25 years of isolating and avoidance due to what was essentially a meaningless short circuit. And what's more, his well-earned blasé response to my thoughts was, mm. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Okay, so you're, you're worried, you're concerned, uh, you said you're gonna chop off your mother's genitals. Okay, are you thinking about chopping off mine? Are you, right now? Okay, okay. Uh, yes, yes I am. Okay, okay. Okay, anything with animals, children, or? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Oh, great, great. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just go ahead, write those things out as if they're happening in real time for the next session. And we're at 45 minutes, uh, so uh, if you can write the $300 to CBT Associates. You're gonna let me leave? Yeah, see you next week. And if you've ever done exposure response, their prevention. Just know that I have listened to myself talk through thousands of times in present tense verbiage the physical serial killer worst possible case scenario that ends with me not, interestingly enough, in solitary confinement, which would be ideal. But instead, after murdering all my friends and family, chopping them up into chunks and bits, being forced to live in the general population of the women's prison of downtown Los Angeles, the largest mental health facility we have in this country, while my comedy specials play on a loop <laughs> and my fellow prisoners complain they don't find me funny for the my rest of my life. <laughs> is that... Is that really... <laughs> is that really so bad. Um, so I'm, I think I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going too long, which I'm so surprised. Um, okay, well, I'll, uh, here are some questions you can ask yourself if you ever wondered if you have intrusive thoughts, and I know everybody here uh, does. Uh, so, um, number one, are you concerned uh, that despite not having any access to a Japanese katana sword, that you will in fact soon eviscerate me, Maria Bamford, America's sweetheart, <laughs> with a large Japanese katana sword, even not being clear what that sword looks like and what the verb eviscerate means? <laughs> are you, number two, Okay, are you worried that you've driven over someone earlier today? Like someone's body, remember earlier today? Do you mind, you guys mind if I quick go check? You know what, I took a lift, but I just wanted to, I'm just gonna run the perimeter. And yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go check. If you are a gay lesbian woman, okay? If you are a gay lesbian woman and not a liar, are you just a little bit concerned that your gay lesbian woman feelings are in fact performative? <laughs> that you're tricking everyone about being a gay lesbian woman and that maybe you're secretly attracted to peen, pulls, and dingles. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Yeah. Do you ever have your spouse get the ice cubes for your drinks so that you won't stuff hundreds of ice cubes down your throat, being the first person to self-suicide by drowning upright upon land? <laughs> Do you ever check with friends after an evening out whether you've killed them? <laughs> Are you terrified you're cheating on your spouse by eating boba alone? It is good. You should, you should share that with them. Number seven, 
Are you sometimes, always, rarely, never concerned that no one is safe around you and the safer you try to make everything, the less safe things will be, be safe? All right. Number eight, and this is gonna take a second. Do you fear that I know, and I am watching you when I ask this, know that I know that you know that I know. I'm, I'm looking at you and I can see you through your eyeballs that you hate me. And the reason that you hate me is just because of my appearance. And I know that you hate me, which makes me, y y you don't want to talk to me or anybody who looks like me, a five, six, blonde, uh, white, 53-year-old woman to prevent yourself, uh, you know, because you, you, you're a racist, misogynist, ageist, terrible, horrible. Um, is anybody tired? All right. Um, <laughs> If I were your three-month-old baby, and I am not, <laughs> would you avoid looking at me in my crib? And let's, let's be clear again, I am not a baby in a crib. But at the same time, <laughs> I am your beloved three-month-old baby, and I need you to take care of me. I need you to take care of me. Uh, but you can't. You cannot because once, or maybe 3,434 times, you thought you might rip me up into pieces like pull apart monkey bread and then butter, butter, and microwave me. Uh, even though you do not have a microwave. <laughs> and you love me. I am your three month old baby. Again, I am not. Would you. Number 12, would you refuse to stand behind me on the subway because you're concerned you're gonna push me into the train? Oh no, oh no, the train is coming. You pushed me, it's been a good run. <laughs> now this is gonna take some imagination, which is all you people have. <laughs> but if, what if I, what if I, Maria Bamford, was an, a 13-year-old English bulldog named Junebug? Okay, would you look at my Instagram and remember, I'm an, I'm an English bulldog named Junebug. I'm wearing a superwoman cape. Would you fearfully gauge, again, I love chicken, but while looking at an Instagram of me on my skateboard, would you fearfully gauge involuntary sensations in your crotch to make sure that you were safe to adopt me despite the fact that you never liked English Bulldogs in that way? <laughs> okay, now, now I'm your spouse. I'm your spouse of 25 years, whom you love. You love me so much, you've got a tattoo of my face on top of your face. <laughs> But because the tattoo artists, they screwed up the dimple, they got the dimple on the wrong side, that now means the relationship is doomed unless we both get nose rings and perms. <laughs> Are you doing jumping jacks right now to prevent me from exploding? Uh-oh, kablam. Uh, I hope you qualify for OCD. It is endlessly inventive. At this point, uh, I'll tell you a story. Uh, sometimes you tell the wrong person about your intrusive thoughts. One of the worst places you can tell someone about your less well-known mental illness is a psych ward. Uh, I had a bipolar episode where I got 5150'd and I was rolled into Glendale Adventist Medical Center uh, because what? It was less than a mile from my house. That's right. Um, in the 72 hours I was in, I had this wonderful psychiatrist. He came in, he sat on my bed, and he said, and I quote, tell me everything from the beginning. <laughs> I will call this man talk, Dr. Loves His Job. Doctor loves his job, was interested. I was slightly manic, so I told him my whole story. Um, I had already been through treatment with OCD, so I got to tell him all about intrusive thoughts. He had never heard of it. He was delighted. I felt like I had taught somebody, I'd done something useful. Yay, team. Uh, 
on my third day in the Huskow, uh, a new psychiatrist worked the weekend shift. Dr. Weekend Shift <laughs> was very different from Dr. Tell Me Everything from the Beginning, loves his job. Dr. Weekend Shift, uh, he did not, he was grim, uh, but in my pressured speech of hypomania, I thought, here's my opportunity to enlighten another person about intrusive thoughts OCD. <laughs> I assumed he'd really want to hear about it, and I got into it. Uh, fear of killing and hurting loved ones. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are thinking of hurting others. That's, that's psychosis. Well, no, 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 it's a, it's a fear of doing stuff. Not that psychosis should receive any uh, less compassion than, uh, than uh, the, but, but sociopathy needs to be treated too. But, the, but, but OCD, it's, a, it's an obsession or fear of doing something. That's a, that's a crazy thing. It's a crazy thing. It's a crazy thing is that I, 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 don't, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna do it. I'm putting you on a 10 day hold. I tried to argue my way out of it, but there is no place you have less debate leverage than when you are wearing a county stamped gown and electric green gripper stocks. So I'm, as I'm sure you all know, be careful who you tell. <laughs> uh, mental health care isn't always ideal. Do not worry about me since that hospitalization in 2011. I've been on meds. I have 1,000 milligrams for Depakote, 50 milligrams of Seroquel, 40 milligrams of Prozac, and if you're in, uh, oh, I took 20 milligrams, 20 milligrams of Propanapol uh, before this speech, so I stopped quivering. Um, I still have some OCD obsessions that pop up, uh, and you can guess which ones I've been having problems with, by which seminars you saw me attend, you minxes. Uh, I wanted to come to this even before being hired and would have paid to come. Uh, we are all extremely privileged to be here. Money and access are a game changer. But do not feel bad if you do not have the best help. I am a multi-millionaire. My current psychiatrist on my insurance keeps getting my name wrong on the prescription. And it's really wrong. He, I can still pick up the prescription because the birthday's right. I don't know what's going on. Um, my therapist from BetterHelp texted me, Christine, of course you're stressed. You just had a baby. <laughs> Everybody's doing the best they can. And sometimes it is not that good. I am not getting the best help. There's a lot of memes out there that make you feel like an idiot. You know, like, hey you, ask for help. <laughs> hey, tell someone. <laughs> hey you with ongoing trauma and the schizoaffective disorder, take a walk, get a massage. Lower the bar to accessing mental health care. We can all be peer counselors. I like to walk through my local Del Taco drive through uh, and hold space for people. <laughs> Encouraging harm reduction. Do you want to give me one of those tacos? <laughs> Another thing that can happen with health referrals, and it's usually someone from California who will suggest Oh my God, you know what? You've got to see this psychopharmacologist shaman who gets your meds perfectly. He texts me any hour of the day or night, and he only works on retainer for $3,000 a second, and his offices are on a helicopter pad at midnight. Oh, he only takes Zell. Uh, I have tremors, I sleep 12 hours a night minimum, and the long-term effects of antipsychotic I have, I'm on, have not been studied. Um, also, uh, they, a lot of times they say call the suicide hotline, which is 988. I like to call it uh, just to see how, what, the, what the wait time is. Uh, <laughs> it can, in peak surge hours, be 40 to 90 minutes wait. So call fucking anybody. I called Hertz Rent-A-Car, South Macedonia. 
California. This woman picked up on the first ring. I told her what was going on. I said, you know, I no longer feel any use in society. Every moment is unbearable. She said, all I can do is rent you a car. But before hanging up on me, she did say, you know what, sweetheart, I do believe every human life has value. You take care. <laughs> Come on. How is that not nothing? I, uh, I once, I don't know if, if, if you've ever been so far, and I, once I, I called the operator, and I dialed zero, and I got him in a roundabout way to tell me that he loved me. Um, if you've ever been so far in debt uh, that someone comes to your door, knock, 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 the internal realization service, the IRS, came and let me know face to face, Agent Lopez, we are now seizing $60,000. From in here? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> I, told, I dialed zero. I asked this guy, I said, hey man, would you still love someone if through their own neglect, stupidity, and sloth, they got themselves in a crippling amount of debt? And he said, and I quote, yeah, I guess. <laughs> the village rises up to meet you where you are at. <laughs> My favorite place to call is the anti-abortion clinics. Um, because all of their literature says life is a gift. Have them take the time to prove it to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, hi. Yeah, no, I am, I am not pregnant. No, uh, my mother was. <laughs> yeah. And that saucy bitch kept it. So, 52 years later, what's the plan? I would like to be placed in a loving home. Anyways, uh, if you can't get help, you know, just turn next to you. Somebody else might have a have a couple eyeballs on what's going on with you. Uh, if you've ever held a conversation with anyone on a Southwest flight for more than a minute, uh, inter intergenerational trauma will come up before the pretzel packet distribution. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me as a guest here this weekend. I love being part of a new group. Uh, after this, this, I'm gonna call my friend Liz. I'm gonna report to her that this speech, this experience, despite me thinking it was gonna be a three, was really more of a four <laughs> out of a 10. And I hope this has been helpful and at the very least boring. Please go get yourself that free shitty ass help from a bored human being who has heard it all before. Get yourself a therapist who is as actively uninvested as a Waffle House night manager. <laughs> this has been 45 Minutes. I love you. Thank you for listening.